The next thing uh, is to talk about uh, noise in RLC networks and this occurs uh, you know uh, quite often in practice. Uh, so, in other words we have already seen what happens uh, with noise uh, in a resistor. It turns out as I was uh, mentioning the other day uh, capacitors and inductors are noiseless. So, if you, if you have an RLC network what it basically means that, is that you have a network with any number of R's uh, L's and C's ok and uh, every resistor is associated with a noise source which we denote by V n sub k and uh, this is the output correct. So, what is S V n Uh, let us call this uh, S V k of f is what? Is simply 4 k t times r sub k, the units being volt square per hertz. All right. So, it uh, seems reason, I mean, uh, it is obvious that now if you have a whole bunch of resistors. Uh, and you have this black box and then you get two terminals out. The voltage if you put a voltmeter across these two terminals what do you expect to see? What would you expect uh, to see? If you put a voltmeter across those two terminals. You will have uh, obviously noise because well uh, you know there are a whole bunch of noisy elements inside the uh, inside uh, the box. And uh, how will we find the noise spectral density at the output? Well, uh, it is uh, very straightforward. What do we do? I mean, the uh, step by step approach is to simply find the transfer function from every noise source to the output. Let us call that uh, uh, H sub k of uh, f, correct? And uh, that and what is the uh, spectral density corresponding to the kth noise source? It is 4 k t r sub k times mod h sub k of f the whole square. All right. This would be this will be the uh, in English. What does this stand? What does this mean? What is that quantity there? that 4 k t r sub k h k of f the whole square, what does that represent? The noise spectral density at the output due to the due to the kth resistor right. And we also discussed that the noise from uh, you know uh, different resistors is independent. So, if you want to find the noise spectral density due to all the resistors, it is simply what is the sum over all resistors. Uh, so, simply sum over k, r k, h k of f the whole square. All right. Okay. So, uh, well, there is one aspect of the whole problem that we have not exploited yet. Uh, what is that? Well, this is true for any network, right? If you have multiple sources, you find the noise spectral density at the output due to each source and you add them. What is new? There is nothing new here, right? There is one aspect of the problem that we have not exploited yet, and what uh, might that be? We have the network consists only of R, L, and C, and therefore, what we have not exploited is you know, once you have a network like this, uh, you know, uh, there is also there is uh, you can. Uh, one aspect is that it turns out to be reciprocal and uh, so basically that is what we are going to exploit next and uh, so to see that so let us say this is uh, a current
the current i all right what comment can you make about the transfer function from here to the current in the kth resistor well if this is i this will be or, or rather let us say this is a phasor of angle 1 angle 0 what will be the uh, phasor here this phasor is simply h sub k of f times 1 is this clear correct all right so uh, the next thing I would like to draw your attention to is uh, the looking in impedance here let us call that z of f all right. So, what comment can we make about uh, the energy supplied or the power supplied by this current source into the box? What comment can we, I mean if uh, you have a current driving into an impedance z of f, right, okay. So, what comment can we make about uh, uh, the uh, the energy supplied by the current source into this box. Pardon? I square times the real part of? Very good. So, basically the power going in is basically I square fortunately that happens to be 1 times real part of Z of F. Right? So, where is all the power inside the box being dis dissipated? it is being dissipated in the resistors and uh, well do we know the current through the resistors right that is nothing but h k of f. So, what is the power dissipated in the kth resistor? Mo yes mod h k of f the whole square times r k. So, what is the total power dissipated in all the resistors? It is simply the sum over all k and that must be equal to, does it make sense people? All right. So, uh, so now can you stare at these two equations and tell me what conclusion you can draw from this? Pardon? Yeah, so what comment can we make about the output noise spectral density? So, S V O of F is simply put 1 and 2 together you get 4 k t times the real part of V O. All right and this is what is called Nyquist theorem. I guess this must be called one more of Nyquist theorems. Right? And uh, uh, so, for example, Let us come back to our familiar example here. We already know the answer and uh, all right. So, what comment uh, can we make about Z of F R by 1 plus J 2 pi F R C real part of z of f is r by yes people 1 plus 4 pi square f square r square c square ok. So, s v of f is simply 4 k t r by 1 plus 4 pi square f square r square c square. 
well this uh, uh, and this is volt square per hertz and we knew this answer already right uh, where earlier we had actually calculated the transfer function from the noise source to the output and and uh, uh, done the math uh, it turns out that yeah we could have done this this way is this clear people okay so uh, all right so what comment can we make about the total noise that is v o square is is simply the integral of s v of f d f and which is simply nothing but 4 k t integral integral what people real part of z of f Okay, and as we've already seen, uh, the real part of uh, z of f df is this, and uh, and if you integrate this, we did the integral the last time around, and we found it to be kt over c. All right. Now, it turns out that in a lot of practical situations. We are only interested in the total mean square noise. Okay. In other words, so far, I mean, let us kind of backtrack a little bit and see what we have done so far to determine the total noise. What have we done? Is uh, yes, can you uh, remind me what we uh, what we need to do? Very good. So we have gone and found the transfer functions from each noise source to the output, right? Then there must be noise somewhere no the transfer function is is got nothing to do with transfer function is transfer function so we need to multiply we need to find the transfer function from every noise source to the output right multiply find the magnitude squared of that transfer function multiply it by the spectral density of the noise source and then that will give us the output noise spectral density due to one noise source and uh, uh, you know you find the sum over all the noise sources right that will give you the noise spectral density at the output. Now you have to integrate this noise spectral density across the entire frequency range 0 to infinity to be able to get the total mean square noise. Is this clear people, right? Uh, so, I mean, in other words, if you find, uh, if you found the total noise spectral density, let us say is like this, uh, you are basically finding the area under the curve, right? So, this is S V O of F and this is F and basically what you are doing is finding the area here. Hmm? Uh, now, does somebody see this as being uh, kind of round, I mean, long winded and uh, perhaps unnecessary? See, we are only interested in finding the the total area under the curve, right? The exact nature of the curve is is irrelevant, so it doesn't make sense to find the exact spectral density, which is a lot of work, right? Why is it a lot of work? We had to calculate the transfer function from every noise source to the output, all right, and then find the square uh, uh, transfer function. And you know, I mean, just in case, I mean, since uh, most of you have this, you know, why is this so difficult look on your face, okay? So let us call this uh, R1, C1, R2. C2, all right. The transfer function from this noise source to the output will have 
it's a second order denominator right so the denominator magnitude square will be a will be a fourth order polynomial right and uh, so likewise the uh, transfer function from vn2 to the output let's say this is the we are interested in finding the total noise across c2 that will also be a fourth order polynomial and then you need to find the integrals of these fourth order polynomials across one over those fourth order polynomials across across all frequency right and this is only for a second order network let's say you had you know uh, five capacitors and four inductors and then you have all of a sudden you have a ninth order uh, uh, transfer function correct which means the squared uh, magnitude response will have 18th order polynomial in the denominator right so all the uh, tricks you learnt in your je and get uh, coaching classes which are basically uh, uh, right uh, are of no use okay all right so but uh, the fact remains that oh well i mean uh, uh, so here is an analogy right Uh, let me ask you a question uh, with respect to the circuit on the right. What is the order of that transfer function? It is a fourth order transfer function. Let us say I want to find the DC gain from V i to V o, right this is V o. What comment can we make about the, D, uh, the DC transfer function from V i to V o? 1, right, okay. Uh, how do you do, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, can you give us some insight into the dramatic speed with which you are able to get the answer? Excellent, right? I mean, so this is common sense. What you would do is basically say, oh, well, the capacitors are open at DC, the inductors are short, so the, the answer is 1, right? You could also do it this way, which is not very uncommon, by the way, in exams, right? You could, you could find the whole transfer function, fourth order transfer function, and then put S equal to 0 and get the answer to be 1, okay? So, this, uh, uh, this finding the area under the curve, right, to find the area under the curve, to, to write the magnitude response, square it and integrate it from over all frequencies, right, is to do a whole lot of work to get the details of the spectral density at the output and then throw away 99 percent of that information and since you are only interested in the in the area under the curve, right? That is exactly equivalent to finding the transfer function, I mean corresponding to this network if somebody asks you what the DC gain was, is to find H of S and plop, then plop in S is equal to 0 and be very happy that oh most of the terms vanish, correct? Okay. So, uh, again fortunately it turns out that this, uh, you know, I mean uh, uh, if you are only interested in the in the total area under the curve or if you are only interested in the total mean square noise, it turns out that it seems reasonable that you do not have to work as hard to go and find the actual spectral density, right, which basically means that you are working very hard to get a lot of information and then throwing most of that information away because you are only interested in the area. I mean all of you understand that, you know, there is a lot more information in the exact shape of the curve than in the, than in the area. Is this clear people? 